Good evening, and welcome to our Christmas candlelight service on this evening. We'd like to first of all thank and welcome his church that is joining with us as we celebrate this candlelight service. We're so thankful for them joining in and sharing this service with us on this evening. And if you will, just bow your head for a brief prayer as we go into our service. For everyone that is out in the foyer, if you could just come on into the sanctuary. Come on into the sanctuary. We don't want you to miss a thing. All right. All right. Come on into the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. And if you would pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your kindness. We thank you for your grace. But most of all right now, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for exhibiting and expressing your love through your son, Jesus, by giving him to us as a sacrifice, Father. So we come today celebrating him, O oh God, celebrating the birth of our Savior, O oh Father. We pray for those all over the world right now, Father, that are celebrating this occasion, Father. We pray that you just keep them, bless them, O oh God, and forever keep us mindful of this day and that we be a witness to the world and remind everyone that Jesus is the reason for this season. Amen.
faces out there in the audience. Come on, men, help me sing it. shouted from the rafters. The heavens roar. Let me hear you. The heavens roar. The angels sing our glory to our God and King. Almighty life forevermore.
good evening, church. Welcome. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to see all of you. Uh, we have family coming here from different parts of the United States. We, have, we welcome the Chenowitz family, Rachel and Michael. <laughs> and uh, Marujo family. Yay, say hi to them. Hi, it's good to see you. This is one thing I like about being here at Christmas. We get to see our loved ones. Eugene, say hi to Eugene. We have not seen him for a long time, but tonight he's here. Thank you for blessing us with all your presence. And also good to see Amy. You're well, good. Everybody, you all look so beautiful tonight. Looks like everybody's ready for Christmas, right? So this is a part of the program that I really like about. Um, you know, we, we love because God loved us first. And we give because God gave us the best ultimate gift there is. And that is our dear Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So tonight, for some of you who doesn't know what we're doing, it's been a tradition. We give presents to people for just being here tonight. So look at your program. At the back of your program, there is a snowflake. If you see a snowflake, you're one of the winners. And I'd like to call Liam to come up here, please. And he will help me give this present. Yeah, say hi to Liam. Yeah. I asked him if he can be my helper tonight, and he just gave me a look. But then he said, yes, I will. <laughs> okay, anybody? Awesome. What's your name? Lana, Lana welcome. Want to be mm -hmm. present? Lana, thank you for coming tonight. And who, who else has one? Do you have a snowflake? There's Rob. No, I. There's got to be five of them. At the back of the program. Come on, guys. You you open your eyes. Oh, there is one, Debbie. Come on, Debbie. Congratulations. Mhm. Mm yep. Debbie, right there. Well, there's supposed to be two more. Or three more. Ron, did you give them out? <laughs> Guys, you got to open your eyes more wider. They illuminate too. Hmm. Or else I'm going to give this away to anybody. No? No? It's got to be there. We gave them all out. I... No? No? I got to... What's going on? Maybe it disappeared. It's a, it's a, no, we did give them up. Okay, Lana, Lana, can I see your card? Yeah. Okay, it's got that little star snowflake there in the pro, on the program. Okay, help check. Now? That's impossible. Did you see some? <laughs> it's supposed to look that this way. Uh oh. The snowflake. Yeah. Yes. 
All right. That is so weird. Okay. There's nothing? That's weird. All right. Yes. Who's got the closest birthday in December? Christmas. The closest to Christmas. Huh? 14? When? 21st? Oh, Grandma, welcome. Yes, Natalia, good to see you. She's December 25th. 20 I think we have the winner. 25th here. Yay! Thank you. Awesome. Okay, we have two more. Who? 23rd? Okay, okay. Then we give him the 23rd. Okay, and the last one. Who else the closest? 21st? You said 14? 26, who? Who's 26? Yeah. All right, let's go. We got to go. All right. Who's the 26? Okay. Let's give it up. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So t today, uh, I mean, tonight, we're going to have the can the Christ candle and um, Cindy Hutter and Carl will do the Christ candle for us tonight. Thank you, Cecilia. Cindy and I have come here, would you believe, for over 40 years. <laughs> it was actually her who brought me here. And I never let him go. <laughs> Thank you. So I've gone a lot of changes. We have seen a lot of the changes, including the building. And we have made it through all of them. And it's been great. This past year, however, I had a little issue with my foot. And so I have been battling this tremendous wound for quite a while. So I want to thank all of you for praying for me and for your words of encouragement. And it comfort comforted me very much. Thank you. It comforted me, too, because it's been a long haul. <laughs> anyway, um, we're talking about the Advent wreath tonight and the um, Jesus candle. And before we light the candle, we just wanted to kind of remind all of us the symbolism in the wreath. And first of all, the roundness of the wreath is like the infinity of God, that God has always been here and he will always be here. And we can remember that he is... Um, never ending in his love and his care for us. And then the candle in the middle that we're going to light is the Jesus candle, and that's kind of symbolizing Jesus as the center of our lives. And um, in this instance, the candle is white, and it also symbolizes the purity of Jesus. And then the four candles that have already been lit are the um, peace, faith, hope, and love candles. And I like to think of those as the gifts that Jesus has brought to us. Yes, he brings them to us at Christmas time, but he also gives them to us all throughout the year. And we can have just great confidence inside because he is our hope, he is our peace, he is our joy, and he loves us so very much.
God sent our salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the Wow, hasn't that been awesome already? Wow, it's been absolutely wonderful. And of course, it's always so very exciting to be here with family and friends on Christmas Eve. And even more exciting that his church joined us here this evening. And of course, uh, some of the wonderful worship team. And uh, it's been such a joy to listen to this beautiful music this evening and to see all these wonderful families and friends I, don't you think the kids did just such a great job with Go Tell It on the Mountain, right? That's exactly what this is all about, right, is telling everyone about the birth of Jesus. And of course, often when we think about the birth of Jesus, we hear the Christmas story and we focus very much on that very early time of Jesus' birth and of course, the long trek that Mary made on a donkey, you can imagine, uh, during the late term pregnancy, that couldn't have been very comfortable. And of course, we know a lot about that story. But what we don't know a lot about, because we only have really two depictions of the birth of Jesus and his childhood talked about in the Bible, and that is one in the Gospel of Matthew that outlines the lineage of Jesus, and that was written primarily for a Jewish audience who were very interested in Jesus' lineage. And then we have the other account in the Gospel of Luke, which tells us a little bit more about the child Jesus, but not very much. And so tonight, I wanted to briefly just talk a little bit about the human side of this child Jesus not just focus on his birth as a baby, but focus a little bit more on his boyhood and what that must have been like for him. Because, you know, we all know that he is divine. Christ, the anointed one, is divine. But we don't think of him in his humanity and what he experienced growing up as a child and so that's what I wanted to just look at with you briefly tonight. Firstly, we need to know that Jesus, he received his name from an angel. I don't know how many of you knew that, that he was named by an angel. An angel came to his mother and told his mother what she was to name Jesus. And they named Jesus Yeshua. Now, you might not know this, but Yeshua is a very common, it was a very common name, a fairly common name in the first century, which a lot of people don't know. And also, a lot of people think that Jesus' last name was Christ. Well, no, that wasn't his last name. Christ simply means the anointed one, the anointed one. The other thing that a lot of people don't know about Jesus, that he wasn't particularly extraordinary looking. And we know this from different accounts in the Bible. He didn't stand out. He wasn't this beautiful child, you know, that everybody noticed. He was just an ordinary boy. And he grew up not in an affluent family, but he grew up in a relatively poor family. And as you know, they moved around somewhat. He was born in Bethlehem. They lived in Nazareth. They had to escape to Egypt. Then they came back to Nazareth. 
And because of the economic circumstances of his family, because of the social and political turmoil of that day, Jesus grew up in a very simple home. His home was very much like we would describe in Africa, like a mud hut. It was basalt, basalt that the home was made out of, and it was mortared with mud on the outside. And they probably had a lattice on the, on the, on the roof, and it was covered with palm leaves and probably mortared with mud as well. And probably the only luxury that they had was the carpets that they sat on that would give them just a little bit of softness because of the mud floor. And this is the kind of home that Jesus grew up in. He didn't grow up in the kind of homes that we live in today. But this is the kind of home that Mary and Joseph made for the boy Jesus. This is where they ate. This is where Jesus played. And this is where they shared their dreams for the future. Now, another thing that they would often do that we might not know about is that the family would travel to Jerusalem for Jewish holidays, for Jewish festivals. There were three in particular. Every year they would go and they would travel to Jerusalem. And when they did so, they would go not just as a family, but they would go as an entire community. That means that Jesus would travel with his relatives and with most people from the village who would make the trek to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival. And the interesting thing about it is that Luke's account tells us that when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem, once again to the temple, and on that particular occasion, when the whole group returned to go back home after the festival, guess what? Jesus didn't go back with them. Now think about it. We have grandsons around that age. I can't imagine Cameron, Noah, Liam over there at that age, staying behind in this large city, mind you, full of people because people came from everywhere to go and celebrate the Jewish festivals. And the family, by the way, these poorer families, they wouldn't stay in Jerusalem when they went to celebrate because it was just too expensive for them. So they would end up going in these makeshift camps on the Mount of Olives beyond the Kidron Valley where they could actually look at the temple at night, which was almost complete at the time. But on this particular occasion, when the family returned to go back home, Jesus did not accompany them. Now you can imagine a day later, a day later, Mary suddenly notices that her 12 year old is not with her. Why? Not because I think she was negligent, but he wasn't with her because she thought that he was running around with his friends and his cousins in this big group where other relatives would be looking after him. But after an entire day of not seeing Jesus, she became concerned. So they made their journey all the way back to Jerusalem to go and look for Jesus to see if they could find him. It took them three days to find him. Imagine, it would be like probably going to downtown Seattle and you're just scouring the whole of downtown Seattle, you know, from Rainier to I don't know where and you're looking for this 12-year-old. How scary must that have been? And guess where they found the boy Jesus. Remember, he was just 12 years old. They found him in the temple. Now, normally, the rabbis would hang around in the temple, answering questions when visitors would come to the temple, you know, about the Jewish laws, etc., etc. But on this occasion, when they found the boy Jesus, guess who it was who was talking? It wasn't the rabbis. It was Jesus who was doing the talking. And the rabbis were astounded at the depth of knowledge and understanding that this 12-year-old boy had about the scriptures. Of course, when his mother found him, she was quite annoyed with him, you know, didn't really quite connect what he was doing. But of course, if you look at the account in Luke, you will notice that Jesus was surprised. And he's like, why are you looking for me? I'm in my father's house. 
right? Doing my father's business. Now, the Bible tells us in Luke that he grew strong as a young man, full of wisdom. And the Bible says that the favor of God was upon him. Now, the connection that I make to all this, I'm thinking about a 12-year-old boy. I'm thinking about my own grandsons, and I'm thinking about how basically invested in the word he already was at that young age. Well, you know, John, in the Gospel of John, gives us a clue about why Jesus already had this rich understanding of the word of God. We read in the book of John, it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, and I don't know how many of you might know the scripture, but if you read the Gospel of John, you'll see in the first chapter and the first verse that it says this, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself talking about Jesus. He is the word of God. And I just wanted to paint that little picture tonight, and we'll go into the next segment in a little while here, of the boyhood of Jesus, because we don't often think about his humanity. We tend to focus on his divinity. Thank you. Yeah. 
you're sitting, the person in front of you on, on fire. So take a seat for a moment. I do appreciate each one of you being here this evening. I hope you've enjoyed our service. So many moving parts that it all came together. Well, that's, we can attribute that to my precious wife. And so thank you, Gabby, for doing that. And I want to thank this group behind us. You guys were absolutely amazing. And then I would like to invite a new friend. We haven't known each other that long, but he's already a dear friend. Uh, Pastor Cummin. He's Pastor Dimitri from the uh, Russian church, and we've become friends already. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, guys, for opening the door for us. The name of his church is His Church. They meet at 6 o'clock on a, a Sunday evening. And he also has a, a very special young man here, and I want to just uh, speak about him for a second. What's his name? Uh, his name is Easy. Easy. Uh, originally, his name is Igor, but Easy, Easy, Easier. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from Kharkov. Just escaped from the war like three months ago. His apartment was completely destroyed. Yeah, but thanks God we are here. We are saved. Amen. Thank you, church. So pastor is going to close for us in prayer. Let's pray together. Would you stand up, please? Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We praise you. We worship you. You became to the to the earth. You took on flesh to save us, to rescue us, Jesus. We thank you so much. Your name is Emmanuel. That means God is with us. We thank you. We love you, Jesus. Just bless our family, our homes. Bless this country. We thank you, Jesus. We can live here. We thank you for peaceful heaven above us, Lord. You bless us. You bless us, Jesus, and we are thank you so much. We we are praying, Jesus, just for that holidays. Bless every heart, every families, Lord. We we want to rejoice with you, Lord. We want to celebrate your holy name. We love you. We thank you, Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Find Christmas. Find somebody to hug on your way out. We love you. <laughs>